Mm. Power stance. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to another amazing and impactful episode of the True Health Forever podcast, where we try to live our best life eh, 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 through the lens of holistic health. I'm your host, Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. And as usual, I have with me the beautiful, the amazing, the eyes of the galaxy queen herself. Please introduce yourself. Eyes of the galaxy. That was a new one. Yeah, oh, that I, one. Like, I like that. But. What's up, everybody? My name is Sinclair, aka V Health Nerd. Happy to be joining you on a Saturday yes. morning. A little disoriented. Where am I? I did my meditation like 20 minutes ago. I was in complete zen. I'm like, who am I? Where, where are we? And uh, yes, but we're here. Yes, we are. We are here. Uh-huh. It's a little cloudy. It's a lot Gotta cloudy. Gotta give you the weather report. Yep. It's a little cloudy, but uh, we're here drinking our tea. We got our peak tea, which is a fermented, it's pu'er tea, fermented green tea. You gotta talk about what we're drinking. Yeah, I, I, I'm it? just looking confused. We switched I it no up from the, we, we switched were. it up from coconut water this okay. year. This week we're doing a pu'er tea, which is a fermented green tea. Very good for adding beneficial gut. Uh, sorry, back, ben- beneficial bacteria to your gut. Thank you, my personal health coach. I You're appreciate right. you. Um, real quick. So last week, we we asked y'all if if I'm allowed to eat on the podcast. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just want to address this really quickly because I know y'all are worried. I know y'all wanted this answer. We asked y'all, am I allowed to drink and eat on this podcast? <laughs> so it was an overwhelming... Overwhelming? No. <laughs> <laughs> to me, me eating on the podcast. All right, so I appreciate everyone who, who tuned in and, and gave their answer, though, you know, you gave the wrong answer, but... <laughs> I will, I will no longer eat on the podcast. The, the people have spoken, all right? Yeah. Now, the drinking was mixed. Okay. Drinking is allowed, apparently. Ooh. But, right? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but we should have separate cups, all right? And the, the separate cups came from Grandy. What's up, Grandy? Oh, love Grandy. Number one fan. We appreciate you. Separate cups came from Grandy. So as you can see today, Queen, go ahead and pull it up. You know, it's a little hot. Yeah, don't uh, don't drink it. Don't hurt yourself. No, I mean the cup itself, because it was just in the microwave. We got we got two cups. We appreciate it. We're you. not married. We are married. Hold on now. I was thinking about false that was sarcasm. Out there. false rumors out there. Um, so speaking of marriage, right? It's uh one very funny romantic. I don't know if it's called a romantic comedy or romantic tragedy, but a thin line between love and hate. Mm. Right? That that's kind of the no. Between love and hate. Come on, young buck. You don't know about that? You don't know about that? Send help. Long story short, today we have a marriage coaching couple who's also married themselves. And their their tagline, their brand is called Married Into Crazy. Mm. They have it, right? I feel like that was that was cool. That that was good. So we're gonna bring them on here to talk about their own journey, their own marriage, what the crazy method is when it comes to marriage coaching and how they balance love and business. Queen, are you ready? Ready. Well, without further vocals and further ado, <laughs> let's get into the episode. Get into the episode. There it is. There. Let's go ahead and welcome Lovey and Snooks, the host of the Married Into Crazy podcast. How are y'all doing? Good. How are you? We are blessed and, and stressed a little bit. A little, little, little sprinkle of stress in there, but more so blessed. Got that. Amen. Amen. I hear you. Look, we're, we're enjoying the, the intro. I was like, okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. You know, always trying to get better every single year. Just so y'all know, episode one, look, nothing like this. No. <laughs> y- 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 y'all know the, the the progression. Episode one, look, nothing like that. Do we have a handshake? Do we have a handshake by episode one? I don't even know. I feel like we probably did. 
Anyway, um, if you're watching this live, go ahead and give this a like, share it. We appreciate it. As Snooks and Love You make up their <laughs> handshake live. Hey, jealous. Come on. We <laughs> love it. No, um, but if like. y'all don't, yeah. Oh, there we go. Come on. Next time you see us, we're going to have our handshake. It's going to be a little different kind of dap. Love it. There you go. If y'all don't take one nugget from this uh, watching every married couple, go ahead and make up a handshake. You know, right? just, just go ahead and do it. Um, but as we get into it, can we can we learn a little bit about who who y'all are? So if y'all don't mind doing a, a short intro of of Lovey and Snooks, I'm sure there's first of all a backstory to these nicknames, and then <laughs> if we can get into how you two lovely people got to meet each other. Okay, remember we only got 45 minutes, so. Wow. Really didn't go, Mr. Unabridged. So she was up on the pole, and then I was only down to contain. <laughs> I can change your life. <laughs> she said, I don't accept change, but I said, but I got a credit card. Wow. And, no, no, so, no, for real though, uh, we so actually silly. met, we had mutual friends uh, and, and family that knew each other, and they kept saying that we should meet. And I was a single parent. Oh. Snooks was, you know, single, and she, uh, we both were getting out of horrible relationships, so we didn't have want well, anything I, I to have, do. I have been out, so let's just say that. And, and we want nothing to do with a, a relationship, period. And we got tricked into meeting each other. So it was kind of a blind date or a bland, blind bamboozlement. A it wasn't a day. It was an absolute bamboozle. Um, so the lady that his mom's best friend worked with me, and she kept telling me for like six months, oh, you got to meet this guy, blah, blah, blah. Same thing. Come to find out his on his side, they were saying the same thing. And long story short, he ended up taking her to our Christmas party. I did not find out until I was putting my dress on. My friend called me and she was like, hey, um, I was like, I'm on my way. Just got to spruce my hair up, whatever. She was like, well, I just want you to know he's going to be there. I was like, who's he? And she said, um, Ernie, because <laughs> everybody calls him Ernie. And I was like, mm -mm, I'm not going I was so upset, but I was like, okay, let me go, whatever. And we get there, <laughs> we get there and he's, he's sitting right there. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So Lovey kind of likes to talk more than I do. And first of all, I wasn't, I already wasn't feeling the whole mix up or setup. And he kept talking to me and I was like, I wish he stopped talking to me because I'm not trying to, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> she, would, she would get up walk away go talk to people at the tables oh, and i was like all right cool whatever see okay so here's here's some common ties because at that time i was going to uc davis where you hey, go hey ucd go ags and uh <laughs> so i had just got out of the service so i was going to ucd full time i was working three jobs and i was working at home depot i was working at so basically my, my big auntie she was like my mom's best friend she was like look you just need to just come with me to this party and you need to get out of the house. Your mama watched the baby. And I'm like, okay, cool. I got this. So that's how I got out. So I was happy to talk to anybody at that point. <laughs> that had nothing to do he, with school. He's just trying to say that, but he saw me and he was like, okay, that's her. Again, she ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> and long story short though, to, to speed this up. So she didn't like me. She told everybody I was a nerd. I was not her type. I didn't tell everybody. I she just, told a lot I, of people. I didn't tell <laughs> just, just everybody that I knew. Right. Everybody that I came in For contact real. with. Right. So there was a series of things that took place. And she didn't like me that night. I knew. I called my cousin and said I found the one. Mm. And then my uh, my grandparents were having their 50th anniversary. And I was emceeing. So our friends invited her. And so she got to see me in my MC status. No, that's not how it happened at all. <laughs> I'll go ahead and let you know. Okay, so when we were leaving the party, the um my coworker, his uh, his big auntie, she it was like she made us sit down and she goes, "Okay, so did you guys exchange information?" I said, "No." He said, "No." So she just kind of gave us the mama look, like exchange information. And it, there you go. That there you the go. Look. That was the yep. exact look. <laughs> he gave me his card. I gave him my card. And then a few days later, he called and we talked. And I was like, okay, he, he seems nice, you know. And we talked a couple more times. He invited me to come to the the birthday, um, not the birthday, but the anniversary party. And I was like, okay, maybe, you know. And Christmas Eve, that was the day before Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, my friend was having um, a party at her house. And I was like, okay, 
I asked her, I said, well, can I invite him just so we could see if there's more chemistry? She said, yeah. So Lovey came, we sat down in the formal area and we talked for three hours. And after that, when it was time to go, I was like, oh, if he would have said, let's get married, I would have said, okay, let's go. Yeah. I knew, I was like, oh, I, we finna get married. I'm finna go wow. get my dress right now. So <laughs> that was it. So that timeline went from, we met on December 16th, to Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, I'm ready for the, the, the proposal. Wow. Hey, all I gotta say is nerds got hey. game. Hey. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Game. What? I can't even. I can't one even week. Disagree. So he did one week. <laughs> so first off, there's a lot, a lot of things that is there, but want to say thank you for your, for your service, and thank you for your persistence in going after snooks. Well, well done. Um, but in the in the time that y'all first met at that party, right, and she was was walking away, possibly. To now, what is maybe the the biggest lesson y'all have learned about each other? Just as as people, as 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 married couples. Oh man, there's 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 so much yeah, land. Or, or we traversed a lot of land. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I got stabbed by her ex. Had two yeah. surgeries. She asked for a divorce. Year four. So, hold, on, hold, hold, hold on, lovey. <laughs> you just gonna you can't. Ahead. And you know, I I read the thing on the website, so like I knew that, but it's still like you can't just. Zoom over, you got stabbed by the ex. I feel like there needs to be at least a sprinkle of context <laughs> inside of that. Okay, so um, I have been, I had, he had been out of the picture for over a year. Um, all of a sudden, it's like he started trying to come around, calling, showing yeah. up at my job and whatever. And I'm like, mm -mm, go away, leave me alone, blah, 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 what have you. And it became to where he like started stalking me. Um, so when Lovey and I, we got engaged, um, actually before we got engaged, he, he was just like very persistent. I was, t I, Lovey and I went out and I was like, look, I think we should just break up. And he was like, for what? And I told him having problems, he keeps bothering me, blah, 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 whatever. Mind you, I went to get a restraining order and they told me that the restraining order was not granted because during the course of our relationship, there had not been like any abuse or anything like that. No one said I should have filed like a harassment type of, I didn't know anything about that. This was till, this was not until like after, after the fact, but um, he showed up at my job with a wedding ring, like out of the blue, I turned around and he's there. It was almost like a fatal attraction kind of thing. Yes. And I was like, okay, this is not cool. That's when I went and, um, apply for the restraining order didn't get it tried to break up with him because my whole thing was i do not want an altercation i don't want him you know any type of violence or anything like that happening um the day after not the day after we got engaged on tuesday sunday he showed up at church out of the blue he saw the ring he was like uh what what's the, i was like i'm engaged he lost it he um uh, he went on about his way but he kept calling me Lovey and I went on, did did our thing. He shows up at my house. It was much later that evening. My cousin was living with me. And he, when he rang the doorbell, no, I don't even think he knocked, rang the doorbell. Get synopsis. Uh, <laughs> that's what happened. So, okay, anyway, he came in the house. He, um, he got in the house. I, I knew it was him. So I was like trying to get him out of the house. He got physical with me. Lovey came around the corner. And then they started fighting. We tried to break them up. And then the next thing I know, Lovey was like, um, I think he cut me. I turned the light on. There's blood everywhere. Oh, I turned and turn, saw that he had a knife in his hand. Um, we had to call the ambulance. It, it was just crazy. Oddly enough, I ended up at UCD Hospital. Mm. Okay. Again, go Ags. Look, saving lives left and right. <laughs> right. Um, and and uh, the first procedure was to save my life. And then I had an amazing ICU nurse that just did not like the way I was presenting. And she went, uh, she went over the attending cardiologist head, went to the chief of cardiology for UCD and said, I need you to take a look at this guy. And they found out. Uh, so he ordered tests that the attending cardiologist refused to run and come to find out there was a shunt on the backside of my heart or a hole. Wow. And it's like, if you take a balloon that has like a little pinprick in it and put it underwater, mm -hmm. you can see that. that's what my heart looked like where you had blood shooting out the blood back out of my back. heart. Mm -hmm. And so they had to go, I had to heal well enough for them to go back in 
and do the second surgery. 45 days later. And uh, actually it was 52 days later. Oh, my bad. And it was, uh, it was good. It was, it was actually the best thing that ever happened to me only because it's one of those things where it's, it's life affirming, if nothing else. Uh, but it, 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 my relationship with my creator, with God is, has never been better since then, yeah. but it puts things in perspective. I don't really sweat the small stuff because it really don't matter. Right. I sweat the small stuff when it's her being late to an event. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> I, I, let me, let me not get in trouble on here. Let me, let me not get in trouble on here. Um, but I think that is the, the perfect, I guess, story on married into crazy, right? When I'm, when I'm looking at that and I'm a very visual person, I'm seeing that scene. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing the, the fatal attraction movie or the, the perfect guy type type movie. And then the happy love ending at the end on married into crazy. So I do, if we can shift into talking about the, how you went from get, get, getting stabbed in the kitchen to now, I have a, a beautiful, strong marriage and I'm helping other people build beautiful, strong marriages. So where, where did, you know, the actual coaching come into play from this beautiful journey? Well, I think um, kind of like Lovey said, all of the, all of the terrain that we covered. So year four, I did ask for a divorce. Um, a lot of things transpired from the time that he was stabbed until until that point, well, I won't say transpired, but a lot of things that we did not deal with and the residual of just everything, you know, um, the in-laws to the guilt to just, I mean, it's, it's a plethora of, of things that happen and feeling alone in my marriage, not feeling like, um, you know, we're married, but I'm by myself. I was like an outsider looking in. And so, from that came to, I, I think we just don't need to be together. So we, not knowingly, we, it's like we created crazy during our healing and our being able to come back together. So for, you know, people think, oh, married into crazy, that's a, a negative. It's not because it's actually an acronym. Um, crazy stands for compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, and yielding. So once we were able to create that within ourselves or for with each other, you know, honestly, we just kind of went on about life. And when people would hear our story, like, dang, how y'all come back from that? And then through the way that we are, you know, we're not just like, oh yeah, I'm married and he, oh, he over there. He, I mean, this is my dude right here. We have fun together. We play okay. around. We're just like, you, we, we're dating still, you know, we really, really love each other. It's genuine and it's real. So when they see that and, and when, you know, people will talk to us, I'm like, dude, I understand where you're coming from. They're like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm like, uh, but let me tell you what happened to us. You know, <laughs> like if we could come back from, cause I was like, uh, she was out. The, I was out the door. She kicked me <laughs> out, not kicked me out, but it was one of those situations where, I mean, I, I literally had a U-Haul. Uh, an apartment that we had put, uh, I had put a deposit on moving out. And, it, and if the circumstances hadn't changed, if God didn't intervene mm. and say the day before I was supposed to move out, like she, her job just shut down. She I, lost her job. Like I the whole company shut down. Yeah. Wow. I got laid off. My whole division was laid off and I called him and I was like, Hey, just let me know I got laid off. And so, and this, when I say this is the guy, I'm, I'm like, this is really the guy because a lot of, I feel like a lot of men would have been like, oh, well, you know, this is your decision. You just, you know, ha handle it however you're going to handle it. Lovey said, all right, well, I'm going to uh, call the apartment and I'm going to cancel it. I'll cancel the U-Haul. I'm so stuck and no, I don't want, I don't want to do this anymore. I was like, wait a minute, you know, I can afford uh, to pay the rent here by myself. I'm going to get unemployment, blah, 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 whatever. He said, no. I'm going to make sure that my family is taken care of. Once you get back on your feet, then you will make the decision about what we're going to do. So um, after that, it was, uh, I won't say it was a no brainer because I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't never looked for a job so hard in my life. I was like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> but in that time, you know, it was talking about dealing with past hurts and just all of the things that we never dealt with, it just came slapping me in my face, back and forth, back and forth. 
and we learn how to communicate better. We learn how to talk better because we thought that we were communicating. You know, we were communicating, wasn't just very effective. And that was, I le we learned the difference between communication and effective communication and how to, you know, deal with each other, deal with not walk around and go around. So it was just so many things that I felt like we learned within that time. It was so painful and it was so hard, but um, I, I'm, I'm so thankful. Obviously I'm not thankful that he was, that he was hurt. And I'm not thankful that I said those words to him. Cause I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I look back, we, we always reference it as year four. That was the incident. It was year four. That was the pivotal point in our relationship, not the stabbing, but when I asked for a divorce, I remember we were at, you want to do your spiel like you always like to do about <laughs> Morton. <laughs> okay. So we were, we were celebrating. I was celebrating our four year anniversary at Morton's with my wife and, and somewhere between the cream spinach and the, the load of baked potato. She looked across the table and said, I want a divorce. Mm -hmm. They're at the anniversary dinner. Anniversary. It was on Look, our bro, four year at anniversary. Morton's. Now, had we been at McDonald's, <laughs> I would have thought, okay, you know, I, I might deserve this, but we're at Morton's. I'm like, you can tell me this, you know, All before the way here. Right. right. That part. And I got to pay the check. Mm -hmm. Okay, we we gonna split this right, <laughs> <laughs> right? We immediately go in Dutch on this one. <laughs> so, but you know, when I think back to that, I always think back at um, the look on his face and what happened, and uh, the expression that he had. That he had, you know, I can never forget that. Um, it, that that just makes me think about, you know, when one of the lessons that we learned. Be careful what you say. Mind what you say to your spouse, to your partner, because you can never take those words back. You may be able to get past it, but the look of hurt will always be in my head. And like I said, I don't regret the road that we went on. I do regret the pain that I caused, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. It does. It does 100%. And I think energy, I mean, get to nerd, nerd out a little bit because that's what we do over here. Right. Energy cannot be, was it created or destroyed? Right. So the, the words that you say, the actions, the emotions, like all of that is is energy. And once it's put out there, it's it lives in the fabric of the marriage. So I love that piece on being intentional about what energy you're putting into your your marriage. Um, Queen. Yeah. So you mentioned the, the acronym for crazy. And first of all, I love that. That's that's amazing. Right. Um, and obviously fits perfectly with your, your brand. Um, but it, what is the crazy method, right? How does, how does that transform into a method that you can use, um, you know, within a marriage? Right. So when you take a look at the acronym itself, being compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, and yielding within your relationship, regardless of what situation, I don't care if we're talking about finances. I don't care if we're talking about your intimacy, communication, parenting, every single thing. What we've discovered is that Every situation, and, and it's again, it's not it's not about dealing with her or him. It's about dealing with the situation, right? And in every situation, we can be more compassionate. In every situation, we can be more real. And being more real, it's not about keeping it real, keeping it hundred. It, it's it's really about really addressing the reality of what's going on, and not something that we've created in our minds. And then it's about accountability and accountable doesn't mean I'm going to hold you to your word. A lot of accountability comes back to, I'm going to be who I said I'm going to be. I need to like the person that's looking back at me at the mirror, but I also am giving you license to point out when I'm not being true or authentic to who I said I'm going to be in support of our relationship. And the zealousness comes back to the joy, having that, that love, that, that zeal for your relationship. Because so many times in relationships, particularly in marriage, you know, you're, it could be month six, it could be the sixth year, it could be your 16th year. People always talk about having a, a loss of love or a loss of that, that, that spark or what have you. Yeah. Be as zealous for your relationship and your, you're in the beginning. Amen. Yeah. And it's one of those things that, you know, we, we try and talk about refining that joy. And that joy is found on a daily, almost on an hour by hour basis, just truly enjoying each other. And then the last thing is yielding. You got to yield because, and, and it's so funny, 
fellas have a tendency to really want to take it to the Bible. So the Bible said, obey, yeah. <laughs> obey, and submit. <laughs> Come on. But it, the thing about submission is when people quote Ephesians, they don't want to read the whole scripture. They just want to read the part about what the woman's supposed to do. That's right. But come on, fellas. You know, look, here's the thing. It's 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 about submitting to each other. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what we talk about. Because uh, truth be told, you know, they say that the man is the head of the household and all that. But I'm going to tell you this, that there's certain situations. I think it's more like like when you watch the Olympics just passed. When you watch the Olympics, if you ever, if you watch the cycling portion of it, there's a thing called drafting. Right, uh, the person yep. with the strongest legs goes to the front so that way you can draft on that individual, recover your legs, and then get, they do it in NASCAR. They do it in all these different things. You should do that in your relationship as well. In our relationship, when it look, we just refinanced our home. When it comes to the numbers, because she used to be in the mortgage industry for twenty plus years, when it comes to crossing the T's, dotting the I's, that's not my strength. Uh, so I yield, and I'm like, babe, hey, take the lead, do your thing. Because when I start talking <laughs> numbers, my eyes gloss over. And uh, but when it comes to dealing with sales individuals or the conversation piece or they need a mouthpiece for the family, that's my role. If there's chaos or something to where she she wilts in those areas where I don't want to really deal with that, that's where I step up. So we we yield to each other's strengths. Yeah, literally, I want to say a re- reflection, but I feel like that's how we we operate yeah. as well. Exactly. Um, and we we can talk about this if y'all want to, but I'm a high eye. She's a I see. amazing high C. So that that's where, you know, I, I'm able to step back on details. I'm like, mm, I'm good. Sinclair, can you do these invoices? invoices can you yeah. do X, Y, Z? Because I'm just like, that's not that's not financial giving me statements. energy. Yeah, financial statements. Oh, I'm just like, oh, Sinclair, can you please do this? Uh, but then when it comes to, Devon, I need you to outreach to people to get on the podcast. I need you to call so-and-so because I have a question. I'm like, yeah, I can call anybody. Like, <laughs> let's, let's do this. Um, so I don't know if you all want to talk about the the disc and kind of how that is, is used even throughout your your coaching or or love languages, but just the importance of knowing each other's, I guess, personalities and strengths. Styles. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a huge part of what we do. So we're, we're both extreme execution certified coaches uh, with ET. I was trained by E directly. Um, and then Snooks was also trained um, by Mustafa, um, who is like the, the disc doctor. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, CB, well, that was beforehand. Okay. And um, she was talking about CB, who's another gentleman that's here locally that we, we really, CB and I were trained, the two of us directly by, by ET at the same time. And then she don't listen to me. So I had CB. <laughs> Talk to her. But we're both certified. And Love, one thing Lovey's mean to me, y'all. I'm just going to say, <laughs> you know that um, I'm sure everybody saw the color purple. When um, right. when Suge was talking to Seely, and right. she was talking about, uh, she was in the room, and and Seely told Suge he beat me when you're not here. Love mm. be doing that to me no. when nobody. So you know. don't put that out there. But do not right, put right, that, that, that energy's out there now. Yeah. Look, I'm light skinned I've been waking up with bruises. So mm. I don't know what she ever. No, but oh, I, I will say this: oh, um, this could be a huge right. part of what we do. <laughs> Waking up bruises in my back, like you dreaming about. <laughs> no, but we use so for all of our couples, every every couple that we coach and that we deal with in our um, our business. First and foremost, they do disc. Um, I'm a high D, high I. She's high C, high S. And so we fit each other. We fit well. It's almost like we complete. You know, this relationship is a whole person. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. And we do that with all of our couples. And then we're also Gottman. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the Gottman method, mm-hmm. Gottman uh, couples therapy method. Um, John and Julie Gottman are the, the world's foremost relationship experts. And we're level one certified with them and in the process of completing our level two certification. So there's another assessment that we use with them. It's called a relationship checkup. But we mm-hmm. believe in assessing and knowing who you are, where you are in your relationship. Because otherwise, you just don't know what you're going to do. And DISC is a huge part of that. I use I utilize it in my, my nine to five all the time. Um, I've taken full on medical offices through DISC as well so that they can operate better. And it just helps me kind of sharpen my sword that much more. So when we deal with couples, we help them recognize each other. Because if you don't know yourself, how are you going to contribute to a partnership? Right. Love it. Love it. Um, so if you're watching this, right? 
where can folks find you all if they want to get married couple if they want to listen to your podcast where should they find you so for um to find us online we're at marriedintocrazy.com um we are also so our podcast you can get on our podcast there too but there's uh different tabs where you click for you know whatever information you're looking for for our um our podcast Mm -hmm. We are on um, iTunes. We are on Pandora. We're on Amazon, Amazon Music. Music. It's a, a, every every major venue Spotify. that you're looking for, and we're in 33 different countries. Um, it's just a matter of just type, look for Married into Crazy with Snooks and Levy. If you type in Married into Crazy, we own that. We got the trademark on it. So everything you do, you're going to find us in some way, shape, or form, as well as YouTube. But we're trying to get our YouTube game to step up like I yours. I know, because now I'm so hecka jealous. I got my pad out. I was like, oh, yeah. dancing on there. Mm-hmm. Listen, we, we, we're going to talk. We got you. We're going to talk. <laughs> um, but if you're watching live, definitely make sure you go ahead and like and subscribe. We appreciate the support. And y'all can ask questions in the comments. So if you're watching on, on YouTube and you have a question, go ahead and type it inside of the live chat. And y'all can get some good interaction with these amazing married coaches on here. Um, now, while folks, you know, maybe maybe think about what what type of thing they want to put in there, I saw an episode on the the four flavors of marriage, and we're we're foodies. The the queen is an uncertified but delicious chef, right? So that 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 spoke to my soul personally. Can can y'all talk about those those four flavors of marriage and which one you like the most? <laughs> That's a great question. It's funny. It's a great segue coming from DISC because what we've done is, so in the Yoruban culture in West Africa, the, right? Yeah, give this point. <laughs> so, but in West Africa, the, the, there are certain traditions that are carried over. Like, like when we got married, we jumped the broom. Mm. Um, and there's other things. There's actually the, uh, the four flavors. Um, I, I should say the four tastes of marriage where you incorporate these different aspects throughout life, right? There's bitterness, there's sweetness, there's spicy and there's a sour. And so we use those four also to cover disc. It's our own spin. Um, so when you look at the D, the D is that sour. The I in disc <laughs> is going to be that spicy. <laughs> she said, All right. So the sweet is going to be the S. Mm-hmm. And then the C is going to be the bitter. And we talk about how the best things that we, we, we taste and we go to, when you go to a restaurant and it just melts in your mouth and you're like, oh my God, I can taste all these different things. It's because it's an incorporation of all the flavors. Mm. Same thing when it comes to our relationships. There's a little bit of all this. So I, I say that the D is the, the sour because a lot of times we can create a sour taste for some individuals because we just like to get there, get it done, keep it moving. Just bulldoze over everybody. So. And there's some sour traits to that, right? It can leave a bit of a sourness. They're like, oh, that person, they always turn up their look like, okay, I don't, he's kind of mean or whatever. But it's not, it, they're very focused. But when you're looking at the eye, the eye's spicy. Like, you, you know, the eye likes to spice it up wherever they go. They're the life of the party. <laughs> We're the life of the party. You know, that's how we do. And that labor. Look, and then when you look at the S, though, the S is all about that support. It's all about that sweetness. They're making sure that everyone's there. So sweetness appeals to everyone. It's the one flavor that everyone is attracted to. You may not have like a, a major sweet tooth, but it's the sweetness of life that everybody is attracted to. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing is that bitterness. And when it comes to looking at numbers, being detail oriented, you don't, you know, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. We're either the turtle or the... <laughs> Well, what, what was your explanation for for bitter? It's it sounds negative when you think of the word bitter, but I didn't hear your your actual uh, breakdown. Well, see, people forget that that dark chocolate, which is extremely good for you and heart healthy, is considered bitter. Sure. You know, the, the more you get when you get the cacao, and the more you get that ninety eight percent that the doctors are saying you need this in your life. Look, you need right. bitterness in your life as well, and then you have bitters that go on certain foods. Right. There's certain drinks, cocktails that, you know, they add bitters. There's things in life that you don't think you need. People don't think they need structure, Mm. but you do. Mm. That's a good one. And so same thing when it comes to bitter. And and when we're able to explain it and kind of point it out to everyone, they're like, oh, yeah, okay, we do. It's not a negative connotation. Just like crazy is not a negative connotation. There's a specific meaning for it as well. 
Uh, yeah, you might need to break that down for me. I, I think crazy is always <laughs> ne- 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 negative, not not in your acronym, but but break down what, when society, crazy. Like when you say crazy, it's mm. like it normally it does okay. have to make it with you. All right. So, but like um, when you know, I'm I'm like the crazy person in the family. Like mm. I do stuff, and they be like, "Girl, you are so crazy." I know they don't mean it in a bad way, but it makes people uh, laugh. Martin mm. Lawrence. When I think of Martin Lawrence, you so crazy. You know? uh, yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, so it can be like, oh my God, he is, that was so, there's like something that you can't explain. That's mm. crazy, you know? Mm. And then you do just have regular old plain, no, they just, yeah. right. crazy. Yeah, you know, Prince, you know, one of his greatest hits was Let's Go Crazy, Let's you know? So crazy. it's just, there's connotations for everything, but you know, it's all about perspective. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, okay, you You've converted me. I believe it now. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm probably like, no, but yeah, that, that does make sense. Um, so which flavor or taste is your favorite? And I understand that, you know, there, there's moods and situations for each, but on, on the regular, you know, wh- which flavor you like, you know what? Spicy's my go-to. Or you know what? I love some sourness. Mine is sour because lemon is like at my absolute favorite, you mm. know? And it's funny that it's sour because it's it's associated with the D. And so <laughs> to me, it's <laughs> and it, for me, it's spicy. I love spice. I, I love the, the when you put some heat to it. it I, I, it's a turn up. Like I, one of the things that got me for Christmas was some cacao with. Um, a spicy uh, jalapeno with, with some pepper to it as well, yeah. and and I, and I love that combination. But it's but and just about everything that we do, I like it spicy. You know, we go to Chick Fil A. It's like you want the regular chicken sandwich or you want the spicy deluxe. I want the spicy deluxe. Right, every time, every time. Um, Queen, you got something? You look like you were you were percolating over there. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, we talked about, you talked about kind of the disc assessment and other things, um, kind of activities and things that assessments that folks can do as a married couple. But what's another activity or, uh, you know, something that you recommend that every married couple do to strengthen their relationship? For me, have fun, enjoy each okay. other. You know, I think sometimes when we say I do, for whatever reasons, we lose our license to silliness. You know, mm-hmm. we laugh a lot. I mean, and it, it's just our own. Sometimes, you know, the inside jokes or whatever. We will be out somewhere, certain look. He knows what I'm thinking. I know, what I'm thinking, and we'll laugh. And then that's conversation for when we get back in the car later on our way home. Mm-hmm. We 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 really really enjoy each other. We don't take ourselves so seriously. Um, anymore, but we make sure that we have fun together. So, you know, um, I think everybody's go to, and anybody that's listening right now, their first thought was like, oh, they're going to say date night. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, go out on dates, but I'm not a, I'm not a fan of like date night because it's one of those things that, that you make it a thing. It should be about just having a friendship. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you seek on a daily basis to become better friends with your spouse, you're going to enjoy life that much more. So I really see, seek out to be each other's best friend before anything else. Mm-hmm. That's the activity, whatever that may be. It could be date day, date date weekend. They, call it what you want, but the bottom line is you're supposed to try and see how you can actually serve each other and laugh with each other and, and be there for each other. And, and that's what adds a spice to your, to your relationship. Mm-hmm. Yep, I love that. Because at the end of the day, like 50 years from now, 60 years from now, y'all are just going to be amazing, beautiful, wrinkled friends. <laughs> you know? I feel like that's that's okay, right? To to learn each other's friendship and grow in that. So, Oh, for well, real. Because we're going we're gonna to be sitting somewhere in a cafe in Italy or whatever, laughing at folks. Yeah. Laughing at people, yes. people watching. And be like, and, you know, just whatever. And I don't, I don't even care. Look, I might be like... I, I always have this thing that when I turn 80, like right now, my my give a damn quotient is extremely low. <laughs> and I can't imagine what it's going to be when, when I'm 80, because I'm going to be walking around wearing some Nikes and that's about it. 
Mm. Oh no, that, that <laughs> is. Wait, wait, that's, that's it. That's it. That's it. it did, well, I don't. Mean, I just just because I don't care because I want to see. Okay, what you gonna do? What you I'm, gonna? I'm do? not gonna be walking with him if you're doing that. I'll be like, I'm 80. <laughs> no, but just having fun, just daring people to live. Look, when I show up and, and I'm face to face with my maker, mm. I want to look like that car that has got bondo and duct tape. Mm. and all that and he's gonna look at us and be like y'all wait hey, what i gave you guys y'all stretched it y'all really right. sat there and lived that life y'all i want god to be like y'all did the damn thing mm. <laughs> i like that yeah, we go. i'm sorry hey yeah keep them in line Snooks. all right keep them in line now. um but yeah i do like that analogy of when you do you know go off to glory you meet your your make whatever you believe in that they obviously have a reflection of your life they're like you did everything you were supposed to and more, right? Right. Yeah. So live, live your life. Um, but I love that. Queen, do you have something? You're looking at me. Because you're beautiful. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. But you. I was just really thinking about, like, I love the just work to be better friends because mm. I feel like I, I hear, like, <laughs> I feel like my family always, like, makes fun of us because they're like, y'all are always together. Like, you do everything together. Like, mm. y'all ever separate? And it's just like, I... I mean, yes, obviously we do things separately. He, he goes out and plays basketball, hanging out with his friends or whatever. But um, I feel like at the end of the day, we we want to be around each other. Right. It's just like, yeah, he's my best friend. So it's like, yeah, I want to go. If I go to the grocery store, like, of course, go to the grocery store by myself, be my best friend. I'm going to choose to bring my best friend it's, pretty much it's anywhere. More, it's, it's more inappropriate when I'm there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about the grocery store. I don't. I don't know what it is. It gets you going. Yeah, it's just. I don't know. It's just always. It's always fun. It's the way it dances the aisles. Can I? Can I throw out a challenge to you? Oh yeah. Please. Because she got mad at me. This is about maybe seven, eight years ago. She doesn't let me go to the store with her. Absolutely not. So. <laughs> Whoa, she got so absolutely right. not. Well, because one, I'm like, look, why are you buying that? We just need to Abs get in, get out. Absolutely but not. We were in, we were in Costco. No, I'm sorry, we were in Walmart. And so we got separated and I was trying to call her and she wouldn't pick up the phone. So, <laughs> nope. <laughs> wait, wait. Nope. so my challenge is to do this. I'm walking through Walmart yelling, Marco. Yep. <laughs> and trying to get her to say polo. And she actually started playing. Nice. She recognized my voice. Cause, but he, Cause he wouldn't stop. I was like, lovey, why are you doing that? Stop doing that. <laughs> And I'm like walking around. People I don't even know. Have you seen my wife? Marco. <laughs> Just having fun. Have fun with it, folks. Look, we yeah, have one yeah. life. This is not a dress rehearsal. You said I do, and you took this person to be your lawfully wedded wife, husband, whatever. And enjoy that. Enjoy it. And it's not about living your life for everybody else and what they're going to think, what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Yeah. Live your life for each other because when it's all said and done, this is it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to enjoy it to the hilt, and I, and I choose to enjoy it with her. Mm. He, he okay. doesn't have a choice. I'm not going nowhere. So now, <laughs> year four. Mm. That was 20 years ago. Why are you bringing up old stuff? Mm. I know you want to leave me, <laughs> but I refuse to let you go. <laughs> oh, love exactly. That. We were we were talking about uh, you know before we went live, you know, the dancing and going to the club I inside of the grocery store. I'm the one that was like, hey, baby. Let's go ahead and dance in here. And she'll be dancing by herself. I'll be like, okay, let's go yeah. dancing. Let's go. Yep. So, yeah, we, we have fun in the grocery store for sure. We have fun everywhere. We're, sure. we're, we'll be known to just stop and do a little slow dance wherever. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. We're going to do that. Okay. We're stop and slow dance. She's competitive. So every time I, you I say am. something, I'm like, oh, like... I got my pen and my paper. No <laughs> play. Hey. And, but to your point about the shopping, okay, so I don't, I, I do like taking him to the grocery store. But I'm slowly learning that any other type of shopping, that's my time. There you go. I, I understand you there. Even when, so we just went to Costa Rica and we went to Walmart and I really just needed like a bag and, you know, some rain boots because he forgot to tell me we were going to go hiking till the day before. Uh, it's another podcast, but we needed just a few things. I had my list. And and even that was like, oh, you know, oh, but they have some cute swimsuits. I'm just gonna go over here. He was like, why do you need to go over there? He's like, but this is why I I I, I planned to go to Target or Walmart, wherever we were, and just kind of peruse around. He's like, we have a list. I was like, okay, this is come this on. Is why I don't take you shopping, shopping, because I I want to I just want to peruse. So mm -hmm. we don't perusing we don't... leads to emotional buying decisions. We're we just gonna have 
shopping be our thing that we do? Mm. Okay. You know it's bad. It's time for an intervention when the high eye is saying stick to the list. Right. <laughs> It's really not that bad. I'm not that person. Come on. I don't really be talking really about not that. that bad. Come on. Mm. So thank you for tuning in to the True <laughs> Affair podcast. Don't do me like that. Oh man, no, you're you're not you're not a, a shopaholic like that. I'll, I'll give you that quick. Thank you. Thank you. Um, awesome. but if you are tuning in, right? So we do have Lovey and Snooks on here, marriage coaches and the host of the Married Into Crazy podcast. Um, you can go ahead and visit marriedintocrazy.com if you would like to learn more, listen, support, strengthen your own marriage, or just you know tune in to the craziness because it is entertaining. Oh, uh, so. Any kind of kind of parting words, and I feel like we didn't get into you know everything that we wanted to in, in this episode. Happy to have y'all come back again. Um, but any kind of parting words or advice you might have for married couples or people considering getting married, uh, what would be your your wisdom for them? Uh, keep the main thing the main thing, which is always love. Mm. Anything that you do with love at the forefront is going to be good. It doesn't mean you're going to like it but keep love at the forefront and, and keep it the main thing. And if you focus on love and, and and know that you're in it for the relationship, everything else is going to work out. But as long as you are focused on that love, because your, your Amy, your granny, your cousins, everybody's going to be down for you individually. Right? Mm -hmm. So Devon's got folks that are down for him and Sinclair's got stuff that they, they, her girls are down for her. Surround yourself with some people that are down for your marriage. Uh, down for both of you because your tribe is going to be the most important thing when it's time for support and it can't be like you know well you know i told you i didn't like her or you know there's always something about him now you need somebody that's going to stand up and be like no 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 you two need to come here both of you sit down and we're going to figure this out about your marriage barring it barring abuse uh, but you need folks around you that are about your love together your collective love and, and that's going to be there for the both of you yeah and just kind of piggybacking off of what Levy just said, there will be some shifts and some changes in your other relationships. And there will be people who do not understand that. Wait, wait, what do you mean you can't do this? Or why are you bringing to, how come you always got to serve him? Or, I mean, there are certain things, you know, that will happen in your marriage that other people will object to, but it's your marriage. And if it's working for you, you know, everyone doesn't deserve a seat in your front row. It doesn't matter how long you've all been in association or how family members, you might have to cut some of them out, you know, because this right here, this relationship, <laughs> this is what's in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is what, that's why we say that in our vows and, you know, for, for people who may not have the relationship with the creator that we have. This is the most sacred relationship that you will ever have, you know, because we chose each other. My kids didn't cho choose me. <laughs> you know, they are a byproduct of what I chose. So just make sure that um, you cherish each other. Love that. There's a chance the rapper, you know, the, the great one, has, has a song where he says, I don't want anyone at my wedding. Mm -hmm that won't be there for my marriage. Right. Amen. I love that lyric. It's a great, yeah. great bar in there. I think it ties into to what you said. So lo love that queen. Anything you want to want to say at the end? No, I just, I love, I loved everything. I feel like it was like, I like having these types of conversations because it makes us, obviously we're going to have probably a whole nother conversation after this podcast 100%. about how are we going to keep, you know, keep the spark. What are we going to do differently? What are we going to do? So we're probably going to do something. You, you see how she imitates me? That was, that was my voice right there. <laughs> That's you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I definitely would love to have y'all back. Mm -hmm. This was, this was good conversations. Um, yeah, no, I thank you for all the wisdom. Um, you know, we definitely, uh, I like hearing real stories. I like hearing the real of, you know, it's not going to be easy. This is what, you know, this is what it's, it's going to happen, you know, throughout the marriage. And this is how you get through it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I love I love the realness. I love the candidness. I love the, you know, being an open book and, and you know, being able to, to share all of your wisdom with us. So 
I'm excited to, to take take these nuggets and, and apply them to our own marriage. And yes, excited for all of you watching who will hopefully take that and you know apply it to your own partnership, your marriage, your relationship, your friendship, whatever um, you know, whatever relationships you can apply these these nuggets to. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So we are about to do a, a little weekly update. Happy to have y'all y'all stick around either on screen or in the background for it. Uh, it'll be like maybe two, three minutes, and then we'll we'll be on out of here. All right. But again, definitely tune in to the Married Into Crazy podcast and go ahead and head to their website. Um, Queen, before we let the amazing podcast listeners go, any updates you would like to share about your week, about your life, about your eyes of the galaxy? We're going to talk about that. I just want to know what's, what you see. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm ready for that conversation. <laughs> uh, but no, this week, <clears throat> I think for me, was pretty good. It was really productive. And so I do want to give a thank you to, to you, King, for keeping me um, keeping me on with the, the to-do list. So we started a thing where, one, we have office hours. Did we talk about that in the last podcast? We did talk about it. And that's actually something I got from on the call, you go by Uncle Ernie. Uh, some I got from from Uncle Ernie and someone else. They're like, you know, in your business, have hours, right? It can be hard to to separate the the marriage from the business. So you should have specific business hours. That way, it's not 11 p.m. and you're like, so tomorrow on the podcast, we're gonna, right. no, which I can definitely do. So that's that's been. Don't don't laugh at me, Snook. Look, listen. <laughs> oh. Laughing because that's her rule. Oh, I was really? sharing. What she implemented. I was like, babe, come on. Can we Listen, can... I've tried in the past, so I'm just happy that it came from somebody else. And that <laughs> I would be like on Saturday, like, okay, it's so how much work you gotta do. When are you gonna be done? He'd be like, oh, I don't know. We're just eight o'clock. I'm like, oh my gosh, come on. <laughs> she ate a lot of y'all. So thank you, Snooks, for, for bringing it up. And thank you, Ernie, for bringing it up on the call. We have implemented office hours, and I've had to catch myself a few times, but Overall, it's, it's been pretty good. So, Queen, you want to say what the, the hours are? Yeah, so for us, and it does include, like, our, our 9 to 5 in terms of, like, it just there are hours that we are allowed to be discussing or doing anything work-related. So, for us, it's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, so, yeah, every morning around 8 a.m. Monday through Friday. Monday Monday through Friday, and then 9 to 3, right? Mm -hmm. 9 to 3 on Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, and, yeah, I think that's it'll be good to, to hold us accountable. Um, but yeah, so we did that. And then also every morning around 8 a.m., he'll send me like my debrief. And I, I love that it's not just like things that you need for me to do. It's like, you know, my goals, you know, the things that I want to do. So includes things. He's just very good at, at like make, make holding me accountable at what I need to be doing. So I appreciate getting that text every day of like, okay, yeah, this is actually exactly what I need to be doing. Thank you. Thank you. And then, you know, just, just doing that. So, um, yes, I appreciate that as I've, I've conquered most of my to-do lists every day. So I feel good. I feel accomplished. Um, but one thing I do want to announce here is that. Oh, talk to him. <laughs> talk to him. So during the, one of the things he's been helping me with, and we've mentioned a few times that, you know, I am an aspiring health coach. Um, and so I'm going to officially be launching, um, you know, uh, starting my, my sessions. So throughout the month of September, I'm going to be offering free 30 minute uh, coaching sessions um, to anybody that wants to wants to just get a little taste. Um, there's no commitment or anything. I really just want to test the waters and get a sense for what people are looking for mm -hmm. in a health coach so I can, you know, continue to build my program. Um, and yeah, just to start my journey. So um, definitely head to the True Health Forever website. It'll be on all of our socials as well when we officially launch next week um, and you're able to book your, your sessions 100% free. Um, yeah, and I'll just give you some some recommendations, um, you know, on what, on what, uh, what you can do, little habits, right? They're gonna be bite-sized, you know, things. I'm not gonna tell you to go vegan tomorrow. That's just not realistic. Um, so little things, little habits that we've, you know, that worked for us and little habits that I've, you know, heard other folks um, implement into their lives that work for them. So excited for that. Oh yes, Queen. Well done. I'm excited for you. Proud of you. Well Thank done. You. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for me, it's also been a good week. You mind grabbing that for me, please? The book? Yes, please. So I think not that one, the other one. I got too many oh. books for oh. my own good. Oh, oh, oh. Um, oh book. Like yes. One. So first off, a lot, lot of good things. We have uh, some things going on, but I'm trying to segment them. 
but I've been working on a, a little children's book with one of my uh, frat brothers, TJ Taylor, much appreciated. So we got this proof that just got finished. It is the adventures, Black history adventures of Rose and Rodney, and they're going to Greenwood, Black Wall Street. Um, so for the folks listening, y'all probably know we created Black Wall Street, the board game. Uh, the Masterpiece editions are finally here. They're going to be shipping out next week, but it's really for eight and up. And we were trying to figure out how can we still teach the, the younger, the, the baby babies about Black Wall Street and start planting those little seeds about ownership, history, uh, strong family dynamic, a brother and sister sibling relationship. Don't know why I pointed at I you when I did that, um, but brother and sister <laughs> relationship. Um, so yeah, Black Adventures, Black History Adventures of Rose and Rodney. This will be dropping September 26, which is Walter Anthony Robinson's birthday. R.I.P. to the king, to the legend, and I dedicated this book to Walter Anthony Robinson. Um, so, yeah, a lot of good stuff. All right, so excited about that. Um, Queen. Yes. Anything else before we get on out of here? No. No? Good to go? Good to go. Okay. Well, once again, thank you, Lovey and Stooks, for coming through and dropping your wisdom. Again, head to MarriedIntoCrazy.com to support and strengthen your own marriage. But we appreciate y'all tuning in to the True Health Forever podcast, where we shall live our best life eh, 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 through the lens of holistic health. I'm your host, Devon Travell. There you go, Slims. I see you through the lens. I'm the <laughs> host, Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. I'm Sinclair, a.k.a. B. The health, health Nerd. Nerd. We hope y'all stay healthy. We hope y'all stay mentally wealthy. And of course, we hope y'all stay, stay true. true.